So what's the story of Occupy Worcester? Mic check. Mic check. On October the 2nd, 2011, we pretended to kick off Occupy Worcester on the 508 show by having a public mic check at Cook's Pond. Actual organizing meetings began happening that week. The first real Occupy Worcester event was on October 8th on the Common. This was actually organized outside of those meetings. And there's about 30 people out here today. Some signs, some guitars. Hi, what's your name? My name's Robin. And Robin, why are you out here today? I'm out here because I'm tired of the bickering. I'm tired of the, the justice. I'm tired of just the hitting of one party against another. We're human beings here. We need to remember that we're here to care for each other. Um, I'm tired of the greed. I'm tired of, you know, just the passivity. The first fruit of the meetings was a general assembly on the common October the 9th, 2011. So at this point, so at this point everyone probably, everyone probably has, a lot they want to say. has a lot they want to say. Hopefully, Hopefully we can find a way, we can find a way for, everyone for everyone to get to say that. 190 people gathered to talk about our challenges as a society and how we might come to grips with them. There were occasional protests and marches. On October the 15th, 109 people marched down Main Street as part of an Occupy Day of Solidarity. They ended up on the common with the third GA. Occupy Worcester was divided on attempting an occupation in Worcester. By October 16th, there was enough interest that a group tried to occupy the common. After warnings from police, they moved to Lake Park and camped in the state picnic area. So last night there was a general assembly, right? Yeah. And you guys were out for that. That was on the commons. Yes. And the original plan was maybe people would camp, start an occupation on the commons last night. That was the idea. But then the plan shifted to say we're going to get these people from Boston to come in. To well, join. They, volunteered. they volunteered to join, so you said we're going to wait until the people from Boston come in so we can all start this together. I would actually say, yeah. I would say that the news came, that came in from Boston was yeah, yeah. part of a catalyst yeah. for us to yeah. agree as a group to permanently yeah. occupy. 20 to 30 people from Boston come out. Really? And, yeah. so, and so everybody, so there's 20, 30 Boston people, and there was like what, maybe 30, 40 people, Worcester people, maybe uh, more? Uh, Probably. There were at least that. More. At least. Okay. I'd say more than that. I'd yeah. say we yeah. had upwards of yeah, 60 people all together. Uh -oh. Well, we marched as a group first. Okay. And and then we moved into the common. Mm -hmm. Some right. of us. Okay. Half of us moved into the common, or half of us or so. Okay. And then at that time, two police cruisers showed up, which were followed by 16 more. Okay. And you're not even supposed to be on the common after 10, and it was made very clear to you that if people tried to do this, there would be a problem. Correct. Okay. The head spokesperson of the police suggested that we would um, we would have better luck at Lake Park. Uh, not saying that he, we wouldn't get arrested here, but he just said that we would uh, have so less a, likelihood of arrest. There was a veiled suggestion In, indeed. that things might go smoother. So, um, what did I want to ask? Um, is we it immediately so went into the democratic process yeah. of deciding, yeah. okay, this is a suggestion, <laughs> let's move to Lake Park, and right. we decided as a group. Is it true that the police, that, that the policeman was on stack at one point? And like, was it part of the consensus process? Uh, the earlier. night before. It was earlier at the General Assembly meeting we had earlier Last that night. evening. Oh, okay. okay. When two police officers showed up around 8 or 9 o'clock. Oh, okay. To, to, just to talk to everybody and let them know about the risk yeah, of arrest. Yeah, we, we asked them a lot of questions about the law. And, okay. You know, Right. Yeah, he, he gave information but committed to nothing, mm -hmm. and we made him welcome and committed to nothing. Okay. <laughs> very good. Very good. So then, people decided last night after the after the Lake Park suggestion came out, people said we're going to do it. Well, no, no it people, wasn't that clear. It, no, a, a, a small New England city produced uh, an astonishing and exemplary example of the new 
first-person democracy. Okay. And decided by consensus, following the process that we had adopted by consensus. So there was no rush here. People were very deliberate. People were very serious. All voices were heard. Yeah, and yes. It's already set up on the common at this yeah. time. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. A group of us, yeah. So this is really technically the second occupation right here. Right. First we attempted to occupy the common. Well, you just but then, did for a few minutes. Yeah. yeah. You know, exactly. There you go. We had five, four or five tents set up, probably. We had five. Five tenths on the ground, on the common. Oh, so since you're bringing up numbers, let me count here. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are 11 tenths. Ten. Yeah. Is 11 tenths. Three in a line here. Yeah? Yeah, these are two here. And there's like, we got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We have about 15 people maybe, and maybe a couple of dogs. And there's a lot of people who went to work and are coming back. Right. So this was like 3 in the morning or something that all this finally got resolved? Yeah. And then everybody came out here? Yeah. We were well, here earlier well, than so that. A lot of us came out here. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. Or people, yeah, so, so people were equal. And how was, the, how was, how was your guys' night here? Good. You said you got an hour of sleep? Oh, I slept at home. <laughs> I live on this side of the city. And oh, I'm hey. too old to sleep on the ground, but... They, they don't bother me about it, so... <laughs> <laughs> is it possible that this is the most beautiful occupation spot in the United States so far? This is actually pretty nice. We even have showers and power and running water and bathrooms. You're coming out just to see the leaves and turning. Yeah. You have a barbecue, you have a picnic yeah. day. It's a lovely New England autumn <laughs> yeah. here at Occupy Western. Yeah. People look like people getting ready for a campfire or something here. This is we, even have, we even have professional chefs on duty. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm, I'm Mike. Jacob. Jacob, nice you can to call meet. me Cook as they're calling me. Cook. Are you Cook? Are you doing? Are you doing like? Are you doing like? Are you doing like a bunch of vegan stuff? Is this your plan, or are you gonna have all kinds of food? Uh, my plan <laughs> is meat until they stop me. These <laughs> oh, no. A group of Clark University students began an encampment on campus until an early snowstorm knocked tree branches onto their tents, and they were told to stop. Matthew Laverne, sometime of Occupy Boston, sometime of Occupy Worcester, now down here at the Clark encampment. Matthew, how you doing? I'm all right. I think there is enough spirit to keep it going. Mm -hmm. I think um, the support is coming out. I've, I've seen the support coming out. Um, I think it's a matter of taking more action and making ourselves known. Um, people are being distracted by municipal laws. People are being distracted by, you know, for example, what we were just talking about, whether it's Clark or whether it's Worcester or uh, the differences in between that. Right. And it, it really just gets in the way of moving forward in a positive direction. Um, Rather than just act, people get hung up on things, which has been the issue for however long it's been going on. And that's talking on a national level with people in general. That's why we are where we're at. People yeah. are distracted by things that they don't need to be distracted by. That's how I feel, at least. Yeah. It, people don't realize they have the ability to do these things. Um, yeah. And, and it's, for example, the Bank of America pullout that has, has been organized uh, around all of America. I was talking to a man in the park the other day. And he's been screwed over by Bank of America multiple times and he was saying to me I don't know what I have the ability to do myself to change this and yeah. I said well we're presenting you with the option right here stop using Bank of America it's as simple yeah. as that uh, it, and the idea is if you get enough people to stop using them um, they won't exist anymore they won't be able to do the things that they do yeah. and it, you know uh, there was a news story, I think it was a couple weeks back, maybe a month back, a little bit longer, where Bank of America Ill illegally foreclosed on someone's home, so they got a lawyer behind them, and they went into Bank of America and foreclosed on them, yeah. and just took all of their stuff. It's things like that that just needs to get done. It's it's. But it's, it's going to be a team effort, right? I mean, it's like it can't just be, and it doesn't necessarily have to be. You don't have to sign up for Occupy Worcester to go yeah. close your Bank of America account. Yeah. But like, I, I am closing my Bank of America account on that day. Yeah. And for me, it just makes sense to do it while people are actually protesting the bank, so yeah. that the bank, even though I'm doing that for some reasons that would be, I'd be doing it even if Occupy Worcester wasn't taking place, right? I mean, yeah. the, the, the hike in fees, yeah. uh, sixteen and a half thousand dollar an hour salaries for CEOs, right? I mean, yep. the stuff is just not cool, but. That said, it seems to be a more powerful statement for me, just a regular guy, to walk in in a shirt and tie and close my bank account while there are people holding signs outside on a exactly. Saturday morning than doing exactly. it just because. And I hope that's what people realize about uh, this, that when you, the power in numbers, even if we don't all agree and we can't figure out what we're supposed to be naming a group of tents, like, there's still a lot that can be done when everyone's working together. Exactly. That's what makes this Exactly. Incredible. That's what I've, I've been trying to push upon people, is um, 
regardless of where you stand politically, uh, regardless of where you stand anywhere, how you identify yourself, um, the color of your skin, the religion you study or you practice, any of those things that we have spent years and years dividing ourselves between. It, it, it doesn't matter. We're all people and we're all in the same boat. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of seeing people be afraid of other people. And that's why I'm here and that's why I've been here. After 20 days in Lake Park, a second attempt was made to set up camp on the common. At a General Assembly earlier that day, Worcester Mayor Joe O'Brien had warned Occupy Worcester that this would not be allowed. I just want to make sure people understand, and I appreciate what you're doing once again. And I think it's the right thing, and I'm not up here to tell you what to do or what not to do. Um, but I, I want to be clear that the city government, which is headed by a city manager, has made a determination that if people do camp, they will be arrested. I just want people to understand that. I can appreciate you're going to do what you're going to do. Uh, you know, that's your right to do that. But I just want folks to understand that me being here doesn't change that dynamic. We are Seventeen were arrested for attempting to camp and two more were arrested in the general confusion. We Spectators marched to the police station where the arrestees were being held. Civil disobedience does not include endangering the public. Move to the sidewalk before you harm yourself to somebody else. Three more were arrested on the way. Who do you serve? Let him go! Let him go! The whole world is watching! The whole world is watching! Let him go! The whole world is watching! Let him go! 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 Let them go! Let them go! Let them go! Let them go! On November the 10th, there was a Marriott Corporation Day satirical protest at City Hall. When police broke up this event, people entered City Hall to speak with the mayor and the city manager. Police then threatened them with arrest if they did not leave the building. The Lake Park camp had a camping permit, and as the permit was due to expire, an occupation was begun in Lincoln Square on November the 13th, 2011. People are rolling, moving these to where? The plan here has been to not risk arrest. Well, maybe we could do like sleeping bag, sleeping bag this way so we're not blocking. Yeah, let's turn it. Turn ah, it. so the plan is to now. We're smart. <laughs> Sleep in a this line way, along the sidewalk. And um, actually, let's take this one off. That's the power, people. We're going to go one sleeping spot wide here so it's not blocked. Uh, and not on the grass. We got the other end. And... All right. So all of them just like this right here. How was the night out here? The, the police, last night the police were saying that people were not allowed to be on the grass at night and people were not allowed to sleep on the sidewalk at all. Mm -hmm. But people were sleeping on the sidewalk. Yeah, yeah, so we, so we slept on the sidewalk anyways. Yeah? I, I got about three hours sleep, I mean, come and bother us but like every hour and a half or so. Okay. But um, yeah, I mean, only three, only three people didn't get sleep. Okay. Uh, and they stayed up and they were watching camp for us and to alerted us to the police presence. So this is going to be potentially be a kind of sleep deprived campsite if it manages to hang on for a while. No, actually, you want to know what the um, for some reason my head was able to drown out the all everything that was all, going on. All the traffic noise and all mm -hmm. the running around, and whatever. Mm -hmm. 
The only thing that woke me up were, was any time the, uh, the cops the cops came around and started, you know, doing their thing. What were they? They were just saying like you can't sleep here. Yeah, you, uh, bas basically that that uh, a blank a blanket is is part of an encampment. Okay. You can't even sleep under a blanket. Not not even a a sleeping bag, but a blanket. Okay. So it, so it was getting into some sort of weird nitpicking between people around. What, what exactly can we do that would somehow follow the letter of the law? No, we we don't know yet. You don't even know. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna compile some kind of list for us. Even though you know we already have a set of ordinances that are right there, right in front of their faces, that say, you know, we're doing exactly what is within the law, and you're just coming in nitpicking us. Right. So so there's gonna be some sort of list potentially of like what exactly is the what what exactly is technically legal to do in this case? Nothing. No. Nothing. You, oh, you don't think anything is legal? No. They want us to. They want us to protest 24 hours a day. Like That's be what, awake. Which is not so bad. I mean, I, I could do it if I had enough coffee. But we had a little bit this morning. Yeah. Yep. Bean counter. Good stuff. Good With stuff. Some honey. So now, right now, the encampment is basically some tarps, some sleeping bags, yeah. uh, some food. And I have to say, I've seen actual homeless encampments in Worcester that look sort of better than this. What's what's <laughs> what's the next step? I'd say the next step is. I don't know, for me, I, I feel like if we, if we honestly just brought the, brought the truck over, yeah, took all the equipment, uh -huh. everything we have in like in, in the the cars and vans that we have, just threw it out here and, and you know with, with people here, then you know we we'd have our spot. That's that's my opinion. But, okay. Um, you know the the police might say otherwise, and all we'll have to do is like do that little bickering thing that they like to do. And, all right. I, I, I like the spirit of experimentation, though, basically saying, like, let's just, I don't know, let's just keep adapting ourselves to the environment and uh, keep evolving, and eventually maybe we'll find a stable niche in the ecosystem. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, it'd also be nice to uh, just push the limit. Eventually, the Worcester Area Missionary Society let the group camp in their adjacent parking lot. At the November 22nd Worcester City Council meeting, the council discussed Occupy Worcester. Occupy Worcester was concerned with the contradictory instructions police were giving them about the Lincoln Square occupation, the Maria Corporation Day arrest threat, and the huge police presence that seemed to hover around every Occupy Worcester event, including this council meeting. Yes. Paul Mary. Uh, my name is Joe Scully. I am a resident of Worcester and a member of Occupy Worcester. I speak for myself and not the group. Um, Occupy Worcester is a group of citizens dedicated to making a better Worcester. Uh, we have been occupying First Lake Park and now uh, Lincoln Square since uh, continuously since last Sunday because we care about this community. Um, we have engaged in neighborhood cleanups around the city. We have encouraged people to move their money from the too big to fail banks to local banks and small uh, credit unions. We hold educational events and outreach. We have worked with the Worcester Anti-Foreclosure Team to stop illegal foreclosures in the city to prevent making our citizens homeless. Um, we, have, we are participating in a coat and can drive and ask for people to join us at Lincoln Square with donations. Um, and this Saturday, in response to the nationwide celebration of, of Black Friday, we encourage people to celebrate Small Business Saturday and uh, to support local businesses in the city because we believe in Worcester. Um, we are asking for, not asking for a new set of rules because we didn't like the opinion that the city gave us. Um, we are genuinely confused by what has appeared to be selective enforcement of a constantly shifting set of seemingly arcane uh, rules. Um, all we're asking for is to exercise our First Amendment rights without being met with large numbers of police, having our public meetings conspicuously monitored, being followed into public uh, buildings, being threatened with arrest. Um, in a city with such low voter turnout, one would think that this city council, this democratically elected city council, would want to encourage civic engagement, especially from young people. Um, contrary to a recent Telegram headline, the city manager has not yet met with representatives from Occupy Worcester. I am eager to know why he's felt it appropriate to spend so much public money, taxpayer money and taxpayer resources, giving this group such a hard time. Um, we'd like to know what the rules are so that we can play by them. Um, surely the city has better things to do than to give a group of well-meaning citizens a hard time about exercising their rights. Thank you. 
The council had previously indicated they wanted to deal with these concerns, but at this meeting, councillors Lukes and Haller asked the city council to go on record supporting the city administration's handling of things, and the council voted 9-2 to two in favor. My motion is to, um, is to support the manager and uh, to ask that the council vote to support this resolution. I agree that there are many of us, myself included, that are very supportive and sympathetic with the goals and mission of Occupy Worcester. But my intent in signing on to this order was to make sure and to applaud the city managers uniformly applying the regulations and laws of this city, which I believe to be paramount to our city being responsive to the needs of its entire community. And I stand tonight to make that same applause to the city manager and his administration. It's Sunday, November the 27th, 2011. We're here at Lincoln Square where Occupy Worcester has now been here for two weeks. Liz, two Hi. weeks is a long time. It is. How's it been going? Um, it's been a challenge to maintain a consistent presence, but there's yeah. been a consistent presence of at least a couple of people here regularly. Uh -huh. And I think people have been working out how to coordinate that uh -huh. and how to manage in the space and still yeah. maintain the presence. And when I talk to people, I talk to people about like um, getting corruption out of the government. I talk to people about fair and equitable taxation yes. and how the workers are treated. And yes. um, Dana was just bringing forward a proposal in regards to like a mission statement thing or flyer things that will incorporate what we're talking about yes. and the things we're talking about are the people being able to survive people who have been through education process and are working to just have a job and survive right you know especially people you know people will yell get a job and say things like that to people but there's a lot of people who have been through college and are either struggling to find a job or they have a job and they're struggling to be able to manage the debt that they've got right and still survive and live like even in a studio apartment right. and pay for food and what I was talking about like with Joe the other day was um, people who have two jobs to try and make ends meet, they don't have the actual time to be able to do things like go to the doctors. Yeah. And what does our society come to when people who are working two jobs, if you're working more than 40 hours, do you actually have time to do things like basic self-care? Meanwhile, the Missionary Society had rented space in their Lincoln Square building to some tenants and asked Occupy Worcester to vacate the parking lot for the tenants to use. They vacated the lot in early December. This was not the end of Occupy Worcester. The group continued to meet into the summer, but they shifted focus to supporting other occupations in New England and to more conventional modes of activism. For example, the February the 3rd anti-NDAA protest that drew in more conservative activists from the Libertarian and Ron Paul side of things. Occupy Worcester built a lot of relationships, developed a lot of skills, and probably will continue to have an impact on Worcester for a long time to come.